Hi, my name is EJ Massa. I eat so many cured meats that my family won't have to embalm me when I die. My nitrate-infused flesh will be around for thousands of years. My local Italian shop stopped carrying a homemade sausage that I liked, a dry sausage, and the stuff you get at the grocery store is clearly lacking. It's fine, but it's basically one step up from pepperoni you'd find on trash pizza. Not that there's anything wrong with trash pizza, but I like a little quality in my dry sausage, so I decided to take things into my own hands. And my first thought was to check out Umai Dry's dry sausage kit, specifically in this case the 50mm kit, which is my ideal diameter for sausage. I had such success curing and drying a whole pork muscle and dry aging a ribeye roast with these special bags that it was a no-brainer to try to make sausage with them. Just as a reminder, the Umai Dry material is a membrane that lets moisture out but no bad smells in from your refrigerator, so you can dry age steaks or dry cured meats in your normal refrigerator. So let's see what's in the package. Right away we have some zip ties, which is great because unlike dry age steaks and such, you don't need a vacuum sealer. You'll need a bunch of other potentially expensive equipment, but you won't need that, so that's good. It also comes with Instacure number two, a pink curing salt, which is important. Powdered dextrose, which I'm no science man, but I believe is a sugar that this Bactofirm culture will use for fermentation. It's kind of like in mead making and wine making, you have yeast that eats sugar. You know, fermentation. And here's the main event, the membrane which our ground meat will reside in. Yeah, back in the old country, they'd use natural casings, hang them in the basement. But look, we have science now, and technology, and Amazon shipping and I'm way too scared to do it the natural way. So I'm gonna do it in plastic. And here we have very detailed and thorough instructions. Lots of pictures and words. Found them much more useful than Ikea instructions. So I was trying to have some credibility and buy this kit myself, but Umai recognized my name in the, in the shipments going out and they decided to send me some free stuff. So whatever credibility I had left is gone because I'm accepting free things from companies. They sent me lots of spice packs, like the salami blend, a different salami blend, but it looks spicier, a pepperoni blend, which I love that color, a sopracetta blend, which I think is the one I'll use for this video. It's got spices I like, like black pepper, red pepper, flavorings, garlic, and mace, which is my favorite medieval weapon. It's very effective on armored knights. But that's not all that Umai sent me, this salt blend, so that I don't have to do math. It's got the exact amount of kosher salt and Instacure number two for five pounds of meat. Little known fact about me, I actually have an engineering degree, but I hate math. So, so that's why I do videos now. Now if you get the sausage kit, remember you're gonna have to make your own measurements with the Instacure number two, and you'll have to get kosher salt from the store and you'll have to measure it by weight uh, according to the amount of weight you're your, your meat is. I'm gonna take the easy way out and use that salt packet. I'm so glad I got an engineering degree. To make sausage, you need to grind meat. And to grind meat, I got this Kitto Art Sausage Grinder, which is a third-party attachment that goes on a KitchenAid mixer. You can get a dedicated meat grinder, which is probably better suited for this task, but my gadget quota for this year has been met, so KitchenAid attachment it is. It comes with various plates, but for sausage grinding, you'll want the coarsest setting. Umai Dry says the holes in the plate should be as big as a toddler's finger, and I was gonna measure my toddler's finger, but he was too busy destroying our yard with a tiny rake, so I guess uh, this one's close enough. To assemble, I put this auger thing in there, put in the blade, then the coarse plate, and finally screw this thing on. And there you go, a grinder for my KitchenAid mixer. I'll put this in the freezer overnight because you want the meat to be cold when it grinds, and it helps to have a cold grinder. This grinder kind of feels cheap. I think it's made out of some kind of cheap aluminum or something. Um, so you don't want to do any heavy duty cleaning to it. You just want to wash it gently by hand, use some diluted soapy water, should be fine. I'll have links to all the gear in the description below. Now we come to the meat. I went to my local butcher shop and asked for five pounds of boneless pork butt. And boy, does it look great. This is a great hunk of meat. 
feels very fresh. I'll cut it into easy to process cubes and you can tell that it has some great meat to fat ratio. I'll use my knife to cut it into strips and then into cubes. And there's five pounds of high quality pork butt, which I'll put in the freezer for about an hour or so. This will chill the meat so that when it grinds, it won't get mushy and it'll have a nice coarse texture, which is perfect for dry sausage. I'll pour my salts into a bowl, which includes the perfectly measured amount of kosher salt and Instacure number two for five pounds of meat. I add in the spice packet, two teaspoons of dextrose. Then I mixed it all around so it's well incorporated. Ah, the old KitchenAid stand mixer. This was the first kitchen gadget I ever got. I watched a lot of Good Eats in college, so that's why I have a KitchenAid mixer. That's why I have cast iron skillets. And I think a lot of people who do cooking videos like me owe a lot to Ellen Brown, especially nerds like me who have engineering degrees, who, you know, don't always care about recipes, but want to know the science behind cooking. I have to take off this attachment cover, which has some battle damage on it from the time I dropped my mixer. Still works though, heavy duty stuff. And I put on the ice cold grinder, making sure to screw it into place. Place the funnel thing on top and then put a bowl underneath to catch all the meat. And before I do that, in about one fourth cup of water, I put a half teaspoon of the Bactofirm stuff. I put it in a shot glass, so I have to be extra careful I don't accidentally drink it. You know, thinking that's my whiskey. I definitely didn't accidentally drink it. Gave it a stir and let that activate a bit in the water. I put the mixer on the four setting and now it's time to rock and roll and grind some meat. I staged the freezer firmed meat on top and then used the included rod to push the meat into the grinder. And I really don't think there's anything more satisfying than that. Watching tasty pork rain down into a bowl. I mean, I think it's satisfying. And quite frankly, it's very relaxing. And I think I found my calling in life, being a sausage man. Once all the meat has gone through and I pulled out all the last bits, it's time to take off the grinder and I'll wash that by hand later. While the meat itself will go into the fridge while I set up the next equipment. And it's this monstrosity. It's the Hakka Vertical Sausage Stuffer. Umai recommends a vertical stuffer as opposed to the horizontal ones, and this one is fairly heavy duty. And yes, between the meat grinder, the meat stuffer, and the Umai kit, this is becoming an expensive hobby, but hopefully it's worth it. I'll screw on one of the nozzles that I think will work with this diameter casing. I seasoned the meat with a salt spice mixture that I mixed earlier, and I did it a little at a time and mixed it around with wooden paddles so it wouldn't get too warm. I added that salt mixture in stages and continued to mix until well incorporated. After that, I added the bacto firm mixture and then kneaded the meat with my hands until the meat became weird and stiff and gummy. Then it's time to stuff. I tilted the stuffing chamber toward me and put the five pounds of seasoned meat in there. Then I took some of the casing and fit it on the nozzle, tying the end with a zip tie. Then it's time to crank, and holy smokes, that's a sausage growing before me. Hey, get your mind out of the gutter. It's just a sausage. <sighs> Pervert. After about 10 inches, I tied off another end with a zip tie and actually tied a second zip tie to start a new sausage and then continued cranking until I had two in tandem. And I tied off the end of that duo with another zip tie. I made a total of four sausages. That's two sets of two and I hung them in my turned off oven. The instructions say to keep it in a 65 to 75 degree Fahrenheit environment for this part and your oven is the perfect environment. I put a helpful sticky note on the oven controls. I am definitely dumb enough to turn on the oven without thinking. So that will ferment in the oven for around 36 to 72 hours. Mine were in there for 48 hours until I decided to take them out. I separated them out into their individual links and then I weighed them to get their initial weight and made sure to write that weight down in my handy notebook. And then off to the fridge where it'll stay for about four to six weeks. Four weeks later, and they look awesome. They look like the homemade dry sauce sausage I used to buy. So I decided to weigh them and did some math with my phone calculator. Remember when teacher said that you wouldn't have a calculator on you at all times and then you have to do all this math in your head? Those guys were obviously the most wrong people on earth and nothing they taught me ever had any value. Like I said, I was doing some math to figure out the percent weight lost. And it was about 31% weight lost, which to me is done enough. Some people would go to 35%, but I'm impatient and need to eat cured meats now. So 
That's a good enough reason, right? Took it out of its casing and ooh, I love the color. A nice deep red. Cutting it open and yep, looks perfect. Nice meat to fat ratio. Cut some slices and now it's time to test how these b -b -b bad boys taste. Mmm. Wow. I've definitely never had anything as fresh as this. It makes me realize how dry and stale the sausages I get at the store are because it's it's got a a freshness, a robustness to it that I don't get at the store. And the seasoning's great, it's very zesty. And you get a little bit more of that fermented taste, that umami taste, oh, the right amount of fat. That wonderful um, pork butt I got at the butcher, I can taste it. I can taste that it's really high quality pork. Perfectly seasoned, that is great. That is great. I highly recommend doing that. Here's a fun thing you can do. Get some sharp cheddar cheese and some stone wheat thin crackers and make what I like to call Lunchables for adults. Amazing. So I'll definitely be doing that again and I'm really excited to try out some more of those flavor packets and seasonings. And maybe I'll make a few seasonings of my own. This whole process is pretty gear heavy with the sausage stuffer and the meat grinder but the results are phenomenal, and you literally can't buy this in stores, at least not of this quality. I thought the Umai Dry casings were easy to use, I didn't have to stress at all, and it gets the job done in my normal refrigerator. I know it's not my grandfather Giovanni hanging sausages in the basement, but the results are stellar. Thanks Umai for sending me some extra goodies with my purchase, and thank you for watching. Until next time, bye.